Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Hometown Heroes. I'm Mike Kenichi, and I'm excited because we probably waited two years to try to do this, and we are finally going to get it done. I'm honored and privileged to have on today a uh, former Derby wrestler, Derby captain, 1995 state champion, the one and only Rick Cassini. And uh, Rick, I want to thank you for coming on today. It's quite an honor. Thank you, Mike. It's a pleasure. So, Rick, you know, let me ask you this. I'm sure as a young kid, wrestling wasn't on your radar yet. Uh, you played like all three sports as a kid. You played football, basketball, baseball. Um, what was the sport you gravitated towards the most as a kid? Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, di didn't even know wrestling existed, right? So I went to St. Michael's and St. Mary's and, you know, I played all the, all the sports that were available, baseball, basketball, football. It's really, you know, kind of all we had. Um, the, the one sport that I probably gravitated to the most, I would say was football. Right. Um, I, I enjoyed that the most, um, at, you know, at a young age. Uh, to be quite honest, I wasn't very good at, at baseball or basketball, uh, right. but I played anyways. And, you know, and, and looking back, um, I, I, I think just playing and putting yourself out there is is, is the most important thing. Right. And um, how did you get interested in sports? Did your parents just, you know, decide to sign you up? Or, I mean, like, did you have a love for anything as a kid? Did you like watching anything on TV or was it just the case where? You know, like most parents, they sign their kids up for basketball, <laughs> baseball. Yeah, no, I, you know, we weren't big sports families, um, you know, and, uh, you know, the, the games would come on. It wasn't like we had to watch them. Occasionally we'd, we'd watch a game, but we weren't a big sport. Right. We weren't a big traditional sports family. Right. So um, you mentioned football and I know you played several years of Pop Warner. What would you say? What grade did you start playing Pop Warner? Was it like fourth grade or fifth grade? Oh, geez. Um, honestly, I mean, we were young, man. Um, right. You know, and and I remember all, all, all the coaches. Um, yeah, probably about fourth or fifth grade. That sounds right. Cool. And you know, Rick, um, High school, they don't do as much hit and in practice. They want to keep the kids fresh. They don't want to get them hurt and stuff. But in Pop Warner, you guys hit all the time. I mean, every night you were hitting. I mean, let me ask you, did was it fun? Or, I mean, were there times where you just left practice and you're like, geez, every night I'm getting banged up? Um, You know, I, we were having fun. We were, you know, being kids. And right. you know, it, was, it was like, you know, uh, there weren't too many – too many places where you could, you know, be a kid and, and, and hit each other and get away with it. Right. Right. Um, I enjoyed it, you know, and, and, and in hindsight, I, I, I wish I had played in high school. Um, but you know, when I was playing in pop Warner, we had a lot of fun, man. And, you know, and I think back to all the coaches, uh, Jimmy Mascola and Mr. Robinson and, um, just, it was, it was a great environment. We had a blast. Right. And, you know, that's a, the good thing about football, too, back then is, you know, you had kids who went to Bradley School. You had kids who went to Lincoln School. You, yourself, I think you went to St. Mary's, St. Michael's. So you kind of got to meet different friends by playing Pop Warner. And, uh, you know, I think it was um, when you were in seventh grade, you guys were on a great junior midget team. I think you played for Coach Mo Monahan. Yep. And, you know, you guys – you know, played for the championship that year against Ansonia. That was a very underrated team that you played on. I know like it's a long time ago, but just talk about playing on a great team like that. You had some great players like Joe Cabral, uh, Kenny Cronk. I mean, just talk about that team a little bit. Yeah, we had, I mean, like you said, we had a, we had a great team and in hindsight, you know, had all those kids uh, played, you know, and myself included in high school. I mean, I don't know. I, maybe I would have been good in high school. I'm I'm not sure, but um, you know, my memory from from what from what I remember, we were we were a feared team, um, and we hit hard. Right. And of all the hard hitters, I think Joe Cabral was probably one of hard, one of the hardest hitters. Right. I remember being afraid to you know not not wanting to go head to head with with, with Joe Cabral because he hit hard. Um, but uh, yeah, we were having fun. Uh, Mo Monahan, you know, I, we we love Mo, especially when he would bring that ice cream truck out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, we love him even more. Yeah. But uh, just uh, great times. Right. And you played middle linebacker, if I'm not middle mistaken. Middle linebacker, right? yeah. 
you know, and that's an important position. And, you know, uh, Chris Ruther senior used to always say that like, um, you were the best when the kid, the running back thought he had the hole and you would just come out of nowhere and, you know, kind of pancake him. I mean, how fun was it just to, you know, play that position? Because I mean, you, you make the majority of the tackles when you're playing that position. Yeah. You know, again, in hindsight, um, it was, I, 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 I wish I had played, wish I had played in high school. Um, I enjoyed that, you know, hitting people was, was, it was, um, it was fun. Right. Um, great sport, great position. Who, who, do you remember who, who was the other, uh, middle linebacker with me? I think it was Jason Marshall, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. I think you're right. right. Me and Jason Marshall. Yeah, and you were very good friends with Jay and, uh, you know, all through uh, middle school and high school. So, I mean, you know, I'm sure there was a bond there just because you guys both played the same position and um, kind of had to, you know, feed off each other. Absolutely. No, Jay, Jay was a, Jay's a great person. Right. So, Rick, now you enter seventh grade at the Derby Upper School and, um, it's kind of funny because, again, wrestling still wasn't, you know, the, you hadn't thought anything of it. And I think you played on the Derby Upper School team that year, you know, basketball. So you were still kind of leaning towards basketball. Um, let me just ask you, how did wrestling come about for you? What made you decide to go out for it? Oh, geez. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a funny story, but I think... Uh, you know, Larry, Larry Parentino, uh, you know, yeah. uh, we grew up in the same neighborhood and Larry showed up with these crazy looking shoes. And I'm like, Larry, what are these shoes? You like, oh, the wrestling shoes. I'm like, wrestling, we got a wrestling team. And, 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 you know, and that's when, when I looked into it. Um, and, and, you know, it's, uh, and I'm glad I did because it's one of those sports, you know, I think back, we really didn't have. You know, kids these days have there, there's so many different options for sports. I mean, my son, you know, we're playing he's playing lacrosse and I mean right. lacrosse, I, I don't even know. I didn't even know what lacrosse was. Um and, and I think I think we were very lucky to have a wrestling team. Um, you know, especially for such a small school. Um and having having difficulty just feel you know, fielding teams for baseball, football, basketball, you know, your standard. Right. All your standards. But yeah, and I, I'm thankful that we had the high school program, but especially the, the eighth grade program, which was a, a rarity um, in those right. days. Yeah, and I think uh, Coach Jaddick, Coach Buster Jaddick's assistant, Coach Joe DiMartino, kind of started that yeah. middle school program. And um, just talk about that. I mean, how, how would you say your first year as a wrestler went, and what was it like, you know, learning under Joe? Um, oh, listen, Joe, Joe, uh, you know, special place in my heart for, for Joe and, and all the coaches that, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that coached us, um, Jeff Collins and Jeff Fernandez and all these guys. Um, the, you know, I, right off, right off the bat, I knew I was gonna, I knew I was gonna enjoy wrestling. Um, you know, because it was, uh, you know, that same, that, that same mental, strength that you needed playing football but it was you know it was a it was just you out there it was one-on-one -on -one. um and and uh, i i excelled at it right away um right. and and i enjoyed it you know right and you know i think a group of you guys went out for the team i think it was you alan robert sean kikax uh pj d'angelo yeah Rob, robbie anacelli right so, i mean Danny Ocado. So there was a good group of you guys that came out. And I think that was important because, you know, Coach Jaddick had a good group of kids that were going to be coming out for, you know, when they were freshmen that year. And, you know, Joe did a great job getting kids to come out for that program. Yeah, he did. You know, he was he was a young guy. Uh, we looked up to him um, and we had some tough kids. You know, Sean Kikex was a uh, was uh, was tough. Um right. Um, and you know, we lost some people and some people stayed and some people left, but we, you know, we had fun and it was different and we were in the old Lincoln high school yeah. and, um, you know, and we were down, down there in, in the, in the, in that dungeon of, of uh, you know, in, in the school down there. And it was, it was, it was nice because like you said, you know, coming from, uh, Catholic school, I really didn't. Yeah. I, I, I knew some of the, some of the kids from, from playing football, but it was just another way to get to 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 further immerse yourself in in the school, especially being you know first year uh, in public school. So, 
Right. And now that first year, Rick, uh, what weight, I mean, it was a middle school team, but what weight class did you wrestle that first year? Oh, geez, I don't know. Do you know? I, I, uh, I, if you told me, I'd agree with you. So. Right. I'm thinking maybe a 105 pound weight. I'm not you, sure. You but, might, um, you might be right. I mean, you know, I'm looking through my old records and I think my freshman year was 119 and, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't gain that much weight, you know, over the, over that, those, those five years, I look back, I mean, I gained weight, but um, I was wrestling it, 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 you know, at low weight classes. So. Right. Now do you, 112, I think 112, 112, 112. Yeah. Now, do you remember your first meet, like what it was like, or, I mean, how did, how did you, what was your feeling like that first meet? I mean, you know, you're a first time wrestler, you're going against maybe a kid who, might have some experience. Do you remember anything that stands out to you or was it just, you know, not really that memorable? No, no, I don't. I don't remember my first wrestling match. Um, you know, I can remember, I can remember being in the Lincoln school right? You know, and, and, and parents sitting up in the, uh, up in the stands there. Um, and I can remember, you know, the, the, the feeling, um, but no, no particular match, but, you know, I mean, we were, we were well prepared. Um, right. You know, we had good coaches and, and, and Joe made it fun. Um, right now, Rick, let me ask you, did you go to any varsity meets that year just to kind of see what that was like? I mean, to coach Joe encourage you guys to check out the varsity meets that season? Oh yeah. No, no, no. Of course. Um, yeah. you know, and we looked up to all the older guys, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking through uh, these past few days. I've been looking through old books and programs from from wrestling banquets and all these old names that, um, uh, you know, like like the Calverts and right um, and, and Dimitri, yeah. Dimitri and, you know, yeah. um, uh, you know, just, Rob Scarduzio. I mean, there are a bunch of guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many names, um, you know, uh, uh I, I could go on with, with all the names and, and, you know, all of them, you know, very fond memories, but just going and, and watching the older guys wrestle. It was, it's the same thing like when you're in Pop Warner and you're going to the high school games and you, and you look up to these guys. Right. Um, so, yeah. Now, Rick, um, you know, towards the end of your eighth grade year, your wrestling career almost, you know, there was some uncertainty about it because you suffered a very freak injury it was a freak. It was a freak accident at Bradley School. You know, yeah. never forget it. Um, talk about that injury a little bit because I, I think you and your friend were just, you know, playing softball. You know, tossing the ball and you got whacked right in the nose with a softball. Yeah. So just talk about that injury a little bit. Yeah. So that was uh, that was uh, Alan Robert and I, and um, I think it was after a softball game and we went out on the, on the field and we're throwing around the softball and I threw it to Alan and he didn't hit it. And he, and he said, come on, keep throwing the ball. And I, and I threw it and he caught it and he hit it and he hit it really good. And I, yeah. and I, and, and I didn't catch it. I caught it with my face. I just, I didn't, uh. I didn't see it coming and it broke my eye socket and in my nose and, um, and, and you were hemorrhaging too, if I'm not mistaken. It was, yeah, it was really a you know <laughs> scary thing. I remember. Uh, uh, it's funny how you remember all these all these uh, you know small details. But Miss Piverata had uh, uh, tissues in her. She she happened to be there and uh, uh, watching the game, and she had tissues in her uh, in her in her pocketbook, and she she gave them to me. So I never got a chance to thank Miss Piverata for those tissues, but thank you, Mrs. Piverata. Right, and you know it's funny too, Rick. Um, <laughs> I remember years later, she had told the story about that incident. And she said, because I think she had to bring you to the hospital, you know, it was crazy. And, you know, as you're getting out of the car, here you are bleeding like crazy and you're in constant pain. And yeah. you're halfway into the emergency door and you realize you didn't thank her. So you run back to the car and you, yeah. thank, her, you thank her for driving you. I mean, how the heck did you have that in your mind to even remember, I to, I, you know? I don't is is that what she said? She said that happened. Yeah, that's what she. Now, yeah. see, I don't. I don't even remember that. Yeah, that's because, probably uh, you know. The mind, yeah, your memory is probably fuzzy. Yeah. But you know, Rick, the thing of that injury was, doctors. I think at first told you you probably weren't going to play sports for a while, and I know you wanted to play football. You know, and they had to get you a special mask. I mean, talk about that mask. Um, 
<laughs> I think you had to wrestle with that, and I think you hated wearing that, right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, Mike, I you show me show me one person that liked wrestling with that mask, and I'll call you know uh, uh, show me a liar. But I, you know, I remember that mask was terrible. I think they've got better masks now, but my nose was it was always broken. Um, right. And it would, you know, every every season it would be broken multiple times, and um, I do remember Richie Calvert had to wear the mask too. He broke his nose right. a lot. So at least, you know, and, and being a younger guy looking up to the older guys, you know, it was kind of okay because Richie, Richie was a good wrestler. We looked up to him. He wore the mask. So it made it right. a little better, but it, yeah, it was awkward. Um, right. Yeah. But I mean, it had to be hard to wrestle in that too. I mean, were you able to breathe okay in that thing? I mean, that it looked like the most uncomfortable thing you could ever wear. <laughs> Yeah, it looks kind of, you know, um, like a medieval uh, torture device or something. But, you know, your, your peripheral vision is 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 reduced pretty significantly. So, um, and yeah, I mean, you're at a disadvantage wearing that mask. Um, you know, you need to you, you need to have your peripheral vision to to see what's going on. But it's right. I do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, let's talk about the. Uh... 1991 1992 season it's your freshman year you're wrestling on the varsity and i think you wrestled varsity freshman year correct yes yeah i did right and um just talk about that a little bit i mean you know what was it like being a part of that team you know were you a little and you don't seem like the type of guy that gets intimidated by anything i mean again you know if you could survive that broken nose you could survive anything but just talk about you know, being at the varsity level, I mean, the practices were a little more intense. And that's the thing, too, Rick. You guys practiced four hours every night to stay in the proper shape you needed to be. I mean, just talk about that experience. Um, Yeah, I mean, you know, it was, you know, for an eighth grader and now you're a freshman and now you're in the big leagues and you're wrestling varsity. It was a it was a, it was a privilege. Right. Um, You know, and I remember. um I think uh, was it Jeremy Skiff? Um, I you know yeah. uh, rest, wrestle offs and um, uh, my overall re- I, you know and, and I had a good record. I'm looking at my my stats here and I had a good record and it was you know and I did well and we enjoyed right. it. And practices practices were tough you know and it was um, uh, one you know some of the most most memorable moments. Uh, from practice, you know, I, w- I remember like on snow days, you know, we um, if it was a snow day, it didn't mean you didn't practice like Buster would find other other things for us to do. And one right. of the things we remember us doing was we would go we would go into Osmondale, the whole team, and we would we would run. I don't know. Have you ever heard these stories? Yes. Yeah. I mean, Rich Froley's told me a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, and we would go into the woods as a team and and, and jog through the woods and knock down um, dead, you know, dead, we're, we're, we're calling dead trees. I don't want DEP to come after us or anything, but uh, <laughs> for doing that in state property. But, you know, and we would gang up on a tree and knock a, you know, a dead standing tree over as a team, you know, and I, and I think back to all these experiences, um, they, they were just great great team building um experiences and 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 we were lucky to have uh have them and and the coaches right. that facilitated it right now rick i've heard some crazy stories about what people have to do to get their weight down but i'll tell you right now i mean yours takes the cake you know never mind spitting because a lot of wrestlers do that but eating fried tomatoes and running around in um plastic wrap a plastic bag or whatever is crazy. And I don't know where you got the fried tomatoes thing. Who told you that? Your uh, mother, Linda, told me. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't remember the fried tomatoes, but you know, I, I listen. It's, it's temporary, and you know, we're just talking. Right. It was, it was on a rare occasion, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. If listen, Did you if stress you, over that a lot though, trying to like keep your weight to where you needed to needed it to be. You know, I was I was fortunate. I mean, I you, you have to you have to watch what you eat. You can't eat garbage. Right. And, and and you know, and I think back and yeah, I mean, you know, you're conscious of it, but I, I don't think we ever did anything that was you know unhealthy. Um, you know, and if if you had to drop a pound, you know, before weighing, you know, you could drop that pretty quickly. But over but overall, it was nothing. You know, we wouldn't. 
we wouldn't do any extreme anything extreme to, to lose weight so right now rick um one of the things you did your sophomore year is you went out for cross country to try to be in good shape for wrestling and you know muzz joe mazanti he's crazy with his workouts some of them were you know legendary but um would you say going into the wrestling season, you were like in the best shape you probably have ever been in by doing yeah, well, the cross country? Absolutely. Um, Muzzy would make us run. He would, you know, we'd do the warm up and then we would have the race and then we would have the cool down. And the cool down would be just as long as, yeah. as the race. And I remember saying to him one time we were at a meet and, you know, some time had passed since we actually ran the race. And he said, All right, it's time for cool down. I go, Joe, I'm already, I'm already cooled down. I don't, I don't need the run anymore. I'm, I'm pretty cool right now. So right. he, he, uh, he chuckled and then uh, he said, you know, all right, keep, get out there and go running. Um, but it was, you know, I was thankful for that, uh, for, for, for cross country. It got me in great shape. Stamina is, you know, look, I wasn't, I wasn't the strongest wrestler out there. I wasn't the most skilled, but I had great stamina. And, you know, it's this it's this trifecta of different, you know, different abilities. Um, and I had great stamina and I could outlast a lot of guys uh, going into that third period. Um, right. And it was it was it was a huge benefit. Right. Now, Rick, what would you say was your like strongest suit of wrestling? I know, like, you know, Rob Anicelli used to tell me his biggest strength was, you know, he was able able to, you know, overpower his opponent a lot. What would you say was the thing that. I mean, did you try to wear your opponent down, you know, try to beat him on points? What was what was your like mindset going in each meet? Yeah, I mean, you know, you never really knew um, cuz every every match every match is different. You know, you could wrestle you could wrestle somebody the week before and they can you know, they can they can beat you and and you wrestle them the week after and it's a totally different match. Um but you know, I would I would try to to you know you come out the gate, you feel your opponent out, and and you see what you know what what they're like. And I, I knew that my stamina um, would you know if I could get somebody into the third period, that I there was no doubt in my mind that I had better stamina than than my opponent. Just because I mean you know from all the conditioning that that we did, right? You know, and all the stuff that you know we would do in off season and you know, on your own, all the prep work. Um, so, yeah, I mean, strength wise, I don't know. You know, I, I think back, I, I didn't think I was one of the strongest um, people in, in, in my weight class or in my division. I mean, there were, there were people a lot, you know, you, you mentioned, I think you mentioned Danny Ocado before. Right. Danny Ocado, he was incredibly, he was like freakishly strong. Um, right. You know, uh, he was, it was, I would wrestle him and I, I'm like, Dan, how can you how can you be so strong? So yeah, I, I know I wasn't the strongest, but I had really good stamina. And and um you know, just like a, a you know, a sheer determination. So right. Now, Rick, sophomore year, you had a pretty good year, you know, you continued to get better and better. Would you say by like sophomore year, you really felt confident that, you know, you you were a pretty good wrestler and you could go far with this uh sport? Oh yeah, no, we, you know, I, it, it was at, at that point I had decided I wasn't playing, you know, uh, football or baseball or, or basketball or, um, well, I knew for sure I wasn't playing baseball. I wasn't picking up another baseball, uh, didn't want to go anywhere near another, another baseball. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, that was my sport and, uh, you know, we, we would do off season tournaments and, and, you know, it was, it was a big family, you know, and, and, you know, all the parents, I remember going to tournaments with the Mercutio's and Buster right. and Mrs. Jodic. And it was just, you know, that's, that's what we did. And, you know, um, and, and my parents that, you know, we were, we were fortunate. We would, we would go to go to these out of state tournaments. Um, and I think back and it was uh, very grateful for it. Right. And, you know, Rick, one of the things you, you just mentioned, the Marcuccio brothers, you know, one of the things that was really, you know, cool. And it just talks about the team concept that you guys all had is, you know, if you guys had a kid who was who won a state title and he was going to the open and stuff, you had a kid like Mike Marcuccio in eighth grade who would help one of those kids train for the open, you know, run with him and work out with him just to keep him fresh because, you know, 
that's important too. You got to have somebody to work with when you're, you know, going to wrestle in the open. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, look, uh, you, you know, the old saying steel sharpens steel, right? So, um, right. yeah, I, you know, I think back to, um, you know, Mike and I, we would, we would wrestle. Mike's an incredible wrestler. Um, you know, one of the best to ever come out of Derby. Uh, Danny Okado, you know, it, yeah. Danny, Danny would give me a run for my money. It was, it, he was an incredible wrestler. Um, and we had all these, you know, all these great wrestlers that, you know, um, and, and steel sharpened steel and, you know, and we had fun doing it. Um, and I just, you know, I think that, you know, I'm having all these memories come, come to me now as I'm talking about, it. I just remember leaving practice totally, totally soaked with, with right wet because you know but it, and you felt good it was uh it was a good time right and you know like i said the practices were intense you know people always talk about how jeff collins used to have you guys in that weight room and you know he'd have you put the you'd be bench pressing and he'd have you hold it down until he told you to lift it back up so i mean these yeah. coaches always kept you guys you know in good shape and you know i'm sure at the time you were like, God, why are they killing us like this? But looking back, I mean, it's why you guys were so successful at this sport. We were, we were lucky. Yeah, you mentioned Jeff Collins. Jeff, Jeff's an incredible human being. Um, you know, and, and I think back, right? Um, you know, these guys were giving up their time. Um, Jeff didn't. He didn't have. Um, you know, his son wasn't wrestling. You know, he, there was there was right. nothing like that. It was just you know he he wanted to give back. And, and I think back and, you know, after a long day of work, um, it's it just it, it's incredible that, you know, that that these guys and, and you don't think about it at that time. Right. But I'm so thankful um, to, to all of them. Jeff Collins, Joe DiMartino, Buster. Um, right. There's it's just it's awesome. Right. And, you know, these guys always looked out for you guys. Um, you know, they were big on that, even though, you know, they had to be hard. All coaches are hard on kids, but they do it for a reason. You know, it's definitely because, you know, there's a purpose to it. Let me ask you this, uh, Rick. You know, you, would you say, like, did, was there anybody that, you know, challenged you for your spot in that team that you had to, like, week in and week out go against to keep your spot on the team? Um, you know, I was pretty fortunate. Um I didn't have. I, I never lost my my varsity. I, I think my freshman year, but I, but I was a freshman, right? So I think I was right. challenging Jeremy Skiff and I and and um. But but you know, my sophomore, junior, senior, there was no. It was, you know, and 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 we would, you know, there was a group of us. We were we were all in the same kind of weight classes, you know. Uh, Michael Marcuccio, Kenny Mayer, another great wrestler, Danny Ocado. Um, uh, Brian Woodward, um, yeah. you know, and we would kind of, you know, it was kind of like, you know, at the beginning of the year, you figure you, you talk amongst yourselves and you figure out who's going to maybe lose, lose three pounds and right and down or, or who's going to wrestle up a little bit. Um, because you know, we were a small team and we needed to, you have to fill your team. It's, you know, we weren't like a Danbury where you had, you know, where you had uh, a JV, two JV squads behind you. Um, so, you know, we made it work and, and, and it worked out every year. So, right. And now let me ask you, um, did the nose ever affect you throughout your career? Or were you <laughs> yeah. able to, you know, wrestle yeah, through yeah. that without any issues? Yeah, no, the nose, it still bothers me to this day. So, right. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. It, it, was, it was perpetually broken. Um, so, right. So, Rick, one of the things, I think I know the answer to this because I'd be shocked if you didn't. Did you ever watch the movie Vision Quest at all? Oh, come on, that's like the Holy Grail, Mike. You yeah, to, you, I, <laughs> I remember. I remember Joe, D, Coach Joe DiMartino, telling us that it was an order. Like we, you know, it was an instruction. We had to go home and watch it. And you're like, Vision, yeah. what is this? What is this Vision Quest? And you watch it, and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it's a good movie. Right now. The goal had to be at some point, Rick, that you wanted to be a state champion. You know, I think that's every kid's dream, obviously. But correct me if I'm wrong. I think as early as ninth grade, Coach Joe DiMartino said you are going to be a state champion someday. I mean, when he <laughs> said it at the time, did you really believe it could be possible? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, he he told me. I remember him telling me that. Um, 
And, you know, who knows? Who knows, Mike? You know, maybe if he didn't say that, who knows? Did he, did he plant the seed? I don't know. Um, right. Maybe he was a little prophetic. I don't know. <laughs> right. So let's talk about your junior year because individually you had some great accomplishments, but team-wise the team had one of the greatest seasons in Derby history. I believe you guys were 18-0. and 0. Yeah. And just talk, talk about that junior team because – you guys were all a cohesive unit. I mean, you guys stuck together. And that's the one thing, Rick, you know, I'm looking at all these pictures. And, I mean, I'll see pictures of you with Rob Anicelli, the Marcuccio brothers, Danny, you know, Chris Perillo, all these guys. That's one thing about you guys is you guys were a team. You guys, you know, were there for each other time and time again. Um. Yeah, that was that was a great year, you know, and I, and I think – I'm trying to remember. I think we had, I think that was a year that it snowed a lot. So maybe we had yes, yes. some meets that were canceled. So that 18 and 0 record, was it facilitated by some of these snowstorms? I don't know. But regardless, uh, a win's a win, right? So 18 and 0, uh, it is. But um, yeah, I listen, we were a family, you know, um, small town, Derby, right? And, and right. you know, you look at, I mean, there's only so many males in, 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 you know, in, in the high school and, you know, we, we all got along. Um, and it was, it was nice. We were a family we looked out for each other. Um, right. And, you know, I remember even in practices, you know, we would wrestle up and we, you know, I, I would wrestle Robbie and Aselli and right. Robbie and Aselli would wrestle, you know, some of the smaller guys. Um, and, you know, and it was, and that's, that's what we didn't. It was good because you, you know, you, you learn how to, um, uh, you know, it, obviously if you're a smaller person and you relied on your strength against somebody in the same weight class, well, that's not going to work right? If when, if you're wrestling somebody uh, who weighs a little more. So yeah, we were, you know, I think back, those were, those were special times. We had, we had fun. Right. And you know, in 1994, Rick, you were the runner up at the Derby Invitational. So, I mean, you were you were knocking on the door. There was no doubt about it. And I believe you finished uh, fourth place in uh, the, the Class S in 1994. So to finish in the top five, that was a great accomplishment. I mean, you know, like I said, it's it, you just have to go out there and do it. You can't say, okay, next year I'm going to do it. But I'm sure after your junior season, you said, you know what, next year it's state champion or bust. Um, yeah, it was, you know, a little bit of it was maybe luck, I guess, you know, um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I do remember how, how, um, how focused I was, uh, and, and single-minded, um, right. I mean, I, 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 I'm looking at back at, at some of the pictures that, um, you know, my, uh, my parents have, have scrapbooked and, um, and I'm, and I, and I can see the, the, I can see my face in these pictures and, you know, immediately I'm like, I, I can feel those same feelings and, and uh, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. I remember being just very, very focused. Right. You know, Rick, I want to switch gears just a little bit, you know, two people that were very important to you in your life were your grandparents and, yeah. you know, you had that special bond with them, you know, they were very important to you and just talk about them because I mean, they just took pride in seeing everything, that you did time and time again. And I mean, they were always there too. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, we, we were lucky. My grandparents, you know, you would, after school, you, you go over to Graham and Graham's house. Right. Um, right. and, uh, my grandfather would drive me to every practice. Um, he would take me, he would take me everywhere. Um, he, you know, he, he, uh, um, he loves, he loved that. So, um, Hold on, I'm gonna plug my computer in here. Mike, my, my computer's dying. Right. Um. Yeah. Just. Uh. Just special, very special people. Um. So it, it was nice, you know. I, I always have those memories. Right, and you know, one thing too, Rick, um, about your grandfather is when you had that nose injury, you know, he got you the shades so you could kind of cover it up for your eighth grade <laughs> dance and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, these people were always supportive and, you know, sometimes, you know, people don't realize, you know, grandparents play a big part because they don't have to be the disciplinarians. They could be the good cop and they could just kind of, you know, be, they could be your friend too. And that's really what those two were, you know, throughout your life. 
Yeah, they were they were they were special people. Um, very special people. Right. So now, Rick, um, senior year, you're elected one of the four captains, and I don't, you know, you probably expected it, but at the same time, it's always an honor when you know your teammates because they have to vote for you. It's it's always an honor to know that you know people think that highly of you that they elect you captain. Just talk about what that felt for you to be you know chosen as one of the captains. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a responsibility, you, you, um, you know, and, and you, you know, you're, you're almost like, a like a, like a secondary coach to the younger kids. And, and, and I hope that, that, that I fulfilled my responsibilities and helped out the younger guys. Um, right. you know, I hope, um, I think I did, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a good responsibility, right? Right. You know, Rick, um, your senior year, you know, and again, you guys played different teams teams out of league because there wasn't a lot of teams in the Hoosie, obviously. But Derby entered the SCC. So just talk about Derby switching leagues and going against some of the SCC teams. I know you guys went up against Hand. That was a pretty good team. Just talk about what that was like. I mean, you know, you guys obviously love a challenge and you weren't you know, faced by it. Yeah. I mean, listen, you know, uh, again, and, 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 you know, and we spoke about this just, just a few minutes ago, but you know, small Derby's a small school. Um, and I, I think we did, you know, with, with Buster coaching us and Joe, um, and I, you know, I look back at, at the, the numbers that we had, I think we did, it was, in, it was in, they, we did a great job. Right. Um, and we did as, as, as best we could. Um, so. Yeah. So Rick, you know, your senior year, uh, the regular season record, you were 19 and three, which is just, you know, remarkable. I think you had about 15 pins, 25 takedowns, you know, 25 near falls. And, you know, you're still in the top 10 for uh season near falls in the Derby record book, which is just oh, amazing. Nice. Yeah, I was, I was wondering that because I'm looking at, the, at my at my uh, programs here, and I'm like, I wonder if I'm still in these records. Uh, so near falls is all I got. Well, as far as the Derby record book goes, yes, but I mean that's still right. a heck of an accomplishment. But talk yeah. about the talk about the 19 and three record because I mean that is an unbelievable year, and it's almost like you could kind of sense that the five years of doing this is finally starting to pay off for you. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I, I think one of my losses was, was to, uh, uh, was to uh, Jason Asar, who, who I ended up, you know, meeting again in the finals at the States. Right. Um, and hand, and I lost, I lost a hand and Nanawag, I think I'm looking at my, at my records over here. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, and it's, it, it's kind of, you know, you see the same, you go to tournaments and, and, you know, you see the same faces. Um, and every once in a while you, you see a new face, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, it was, it, it was a, it was a good season. Um, and when I lost to, so I, I think I wrestled Jason Asaro twice, uh, before right. meeting him and, and, you know, in the finals again. And the first time I, First time I think I lost to him, right? Right, I believe so. Yeah, and then, yeah, 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 yeah. Or no, right. they, one of them. I I won one, and he won one. So it was a very close, you know. Right. Yeah. And he was a good wrestler too. He's very he, good. He was, yes. he was he was a lot stronger. Uh, that you know, I I think back to what I remember about him was that he was, um, incredibly strong, a lot stronger than I was. Right. And, you know, one of the tournaments you did win though before, you know, obviously the class S is you did win, um, the Stafford tournament. Uh, yeah. Just talk about that tournament a little bit. Um, yeah. So I think at the Stafford, that's, that's where I, 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 I beat him. So he, Jason Asaro beat me the first time. And, right. um, um, and I think was that, was that at the Derby Invitational? Yeah, I think it might've been. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking, I think I took second to him at, at the Derby Invitational and then at the Stafford, uh, invitational. I, I beat him, um, uh, six to five. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, we had this little rivalry, uh, going, um, and that's a good thing, right? So, right. Definitely. You know, and that senior team too, you know, you, 
it was just such a great group of guys. I mean, they really worked hard. You know, I could look back, Rob Anaselli. I mean, that Cheshire kid, I forget his name and I do apologize, but he, he was one of the best, you know, unlimited wrestlers in the state. And Rob Anaselli knocked him off twice that year. So, I mean, just tremendous accomplishment. You know, it's funny. You don't, when, when you're, when you're, when you're wrestling, you know, when you're in the, you're a kid and, and you're, and you're, and you're wrestling, you really don't focus on other people's stats. Right. Um, you know, you, you think about yourself, but I, I've been going through these, um, you know, some of these stats, Robbie and Aselli, he had an excellent, not just the senior year, you know, four years. Yeah. Um, he was all area junior year. Yep. Yeah. He did it. He, you know, he did a great, he did a great job. Um, right. Yeah, he was, uh, you know, the thing about Rob is Rob was always a hard worker. I mean, he worked hard in every sport he played. You know, same thing with Danny Ocado. Yeah. Know, you know, that those guys, like, that's what I mean, too, is I think you guys brought out the best in each other. And, you, you know, it doesn't happen alone. Yes, you win a state title, but without these guys that practice every day, pushing you, supporting you, you know, you that doesn't happen. So, you know, I know when you did win it, a part of a part of you knows they are a big reason why you did. Absolutely. I mean, you know, with such a, you know, a small team, I mean, you can't, you can't do any of that stuff uh, uh, by yourself. I mean, you know, like I said, steel, the old saying, steel sharpen steel. I mean, we would, uh, you know, we would, these, these practices that, you know, we would push each other through um, and in the drills and the conditioning and, you know, and we were there for each other. And I think back, you know, I remember, you know, you would wrestle and your match would be over. And if you won, that was great. And if you lost, you know, you, you, you get to be upset for a little while. You lick your wounds. But then, you know, the rule was you come back and you cheer your teammates on. And, right. you know, and, 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 I, and I don't think everybody did it because they, because they wanted to. You know, it wasn't, it, was like, it wasn't like anybody had, you know, had to be forced back to cheer on their team. Everybody, right. everybody legitimately wanted to see everybody else do well. Um, and that's a good feeling. Right. You know, Rick, um, it's nice to have fans. And, you know, obviously you had a lot of your classmates, a lot of your, you know, your friends cheering you on. But you had three fans that always stood out to me. You know, I'm going to start one with your sister, Jamie, who was a cheerleader at Derby High. And my God, it was almost like she was cheerleading the wrestling meets because nobody yelled loud, louder during your meets like she did. Just talk about, you know, the support she always gave you throughout your meets. Yeah, I can I can still hear her. Um, you know, I I can I can hear uh, you know, don't let him do that to you, Rick, or you know, some some other, you know, uh you know, uh, some some other shout that you would hear from from the stands. Um, yeah, you know, my family obviously. Um, you know, what I remember too at the states, you, you talk about fans, but uh um oh geez I said just just so many different people that would that would that would show up and you know uh oh I, I remember uh Ronnie Leno you know yes. I, remember, yeah. I remember at the states Ronnie Leno um and you know I I could hear him shouting for me from the stands and I knew that it was Ronnie Leno you know right. because he's got that distinctive voice you and you know and he's loud and yeah. I'm I'm like, wow, Ronnie Leno is here to, to watch me. And he's, he's cheering me on. And he's, I'm like, that was a good feeling, you know? Right. Um, so that was, that was nice. Right. And you know, and everybody, Rick, everybody else's parents, you know, everybody's parents were there. Again, it was like a big family, you know? So I, I can still hear Mr. Ocado, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and, and um, yeah, all these, all these, all these people that, you know, they were like family members. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, Rick, that's really what it was. It was, you know, I, when I talked to your mom yesterday, she mentioned that, you know, how it was so much fun every Saturday going to those meets, she lived for it, you know, it was such a great thing. And that's really the thing too. The parents were very supportive of the wrestling team and you need that too, because these kids sacrifice so much of their time that when the parents are doing everything they can for these kids, it, it plays a big part in it. Yeah. Nobody, you know, nobody wanted to let anybody else down. Uh, I think when you get, when you get to that level, right. Yeah. Um, and, and you talk about, you know, p 
pushing each other. It's it's about not wanting to let your your teammate down. And yes, it's an individual sport, but um, it's a team sport as well. Right. Um, um, so, and you know, Rick, um, you know, the next big fan of yours, without a doubt, and I just mentioned her is your mother, Linda. And right. you know, if you look at all those pictures, Rick, you'll see pictures of you and your father, you and Jamie, and you don't really see her in a lot of the pictures. And there's a reason because she took all the snapshots she's the one who always had the camera she's the one who recorded every game you know yeah. i think a, i think a mr cabral mr pake yeah. they always recorded everything your mom always i mean she deserves a debt of gratitude from she, uh you know the coaches because she recorded everything yeah so you're not kidding listen I'm, I'm going through um you know i asked her i'm like mom do you have uh do you have any 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 pictures or anything from from when I wrestled? That I you know Mike Mike reached out to me. We want to do this interview. She said, "Yeah, I think I have some stuff." So you know she came she came over the house with this big bag, and I and I'm and I'm looking through it. And I'm like, "Wow, you you have all this stuff. Who who saves this stuff? I have, I have, Mike. It's 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 incredible. All these pictures I have and right. every single person that I wrestled." Um, and so, you know, I, it's, you don't, you, again, you don't appreciate that stuff when you're a, when you're a kid, but looking back, you're like, my God. So, uh, yeah, mom, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Rick, um, February 18th was historic in 1995 for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was your 18th birthday. So now you were able to, you know, vote, which was you know, historic, but yeah. it was also the day where you reached your highest milestone, your highest honor. You won the state title. You know, I knew of one other person who did something on their birthday and um, he pitched a no hitter for Shelton on his birthday. Yeah. So for you to win a state title on your birthday, I mean, you can't ask for a better birthday present. I don't think I said to your mom last night, I don't think whatever they got you for your birthday would even matter. Like when did that was it, like, you know, it, it couldn't pale, that. Yeah. It, it paled in comparison. Yeah, it was a good feeling, you know, and I'm, I'm going through these pictures and, and, uh, you know, we had a cake, you know, we're all staying in a hotel and, and yeah. you know, my parents had a cake for us and I'm looking at the smiles on everybody's faces, all, all my teammates. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a good feeling. Right. So take, take us through that, Rick, take us through that whole day. Like what you were thinking. I know it's, you know, again, it's 26 years ago, but just take us through that feeling of that day, what it was like for you. I mean, obviously you were nervous, but, you know, just going through that, the, you know, emotion of it all. Um, Yeah, I, you know, listen, it's, and again, this is probably that, that gets a little blurry with, with time. Um, But, you know, I just remember, you know, feeling like it was, you know, whatever was going to happen. Um you know, it was it was up to me, and 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 uh, you know, hopefully, it was my birthday. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, I would have some. You know, God would be with me here, and and uh, and give me a good birthday present. But uh, yeah, it was a good feeling. Right. So when you know the match is over and you realize you won the Class S title, number one, your third biggest fan. You know. I don't put them in order because all three of them are your biggest fans, but your father, Vic came right out there, gave you a big hug. You could see emotion on him. I think tears were coming down his face. So, I mean, just talk about what that feeling was like when uh, you realized it happened. He, uh, yeah. So listen, of uh, the, um, the, uh, I have a picture of my father and I, and that might be one of my, one of my favorite pictures. Um, you know, just him and I hugging, it's a nice, nice picture. Right. Good feeling. Right. And um, I mean, what did it feel like when Coach But you could see how proud he was, how proud Coach D Martino was. And Coach D Martino Tino always told you it was gonna happen. So yeah. I mean, you know, did you say to him, you know, thank you, coach? Like I you were right, you believed in me. Yeah, I mean, you know, at that moment, I, I just remember um you know, you, you really you, you talk about for, for me that match was was like you said the pinnacle, um, and uh, you know of my, of my high school wrestling career, right? So I just remember uh, coming off that mat, I I was physically exhausted. I know, uh, right? I, I wrestled 
I wrestled as hard as I as I possibly could. Um, I didn't leave. Uh, I left it all on the mat, and and you know, thankfully, I won. Um, and uh, yeah, I just you know, I, I I remember I'm you know, I still had these pictures, and I'm looking at you know, um, at Buster, you know, Buster's got me embraced, and then right. you no, know, and um, they're just they're great pictures. It was a, it was a nice moment in time. Right, and you know the the to top it all off, you were named outstanding wrestler of that tournament. So I mean, yeah, to win the class S title and then get that, you know, outstanding wrestler of the tournament. I mean, I know you you you're not the type of guy that likes to talk about yourself. You know, you get a little embarrassed by that. But a part of you had to just be so proud of what you accomplished. I to be honest with you, I I didn't even expect that. Um, right, I was I was more shocked. I was more shocked about the the outstanding wrestler award, um, and you know it's it's uh, yeah it's it's a, it's a, it's an honor it's it's a it's a good thing, so right and you know Rick, um, you would wrestle in the open and you did well in that, but uh, you know the wrestling career kind of comes to a close and four years goes by quick. I mean, today is your twenty sixth anniversary of graduating high school, which is just hard to believe. But I mean, did you? look back to and be like, God, wow, this just went by so quick. Absolutely. You know, and I, and I look now and I've got uh, my son, um, you know, he's wrestling uh, on a middle school team. We're in, uh, uh, he wrestles on uh, the HK, Adam Killingworth uh, wrestling team. And, right. um, you know, and it's, it, it's, it's, it's a good feeling to see him out there uh, wrestling uh, and I had all these scrapbooks with all these old pictures and we were sitting down right. uh, last night and this morning and, and flipping through them. And I was showing them, showing them some old, uh, you know, pictures that were in the newspapers and old, you know, picture, uh, pictures from uh, my parents took on the camera. And yeah, it's a good feeling. Um, and it goes by quick. And, you know, and, and, I, and I coached at a, at a couple different schools, um, you know, when I was when I was younger and I was teaching um, and, and that was a good feeling. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, the wrestling community, it's a, it's a, it's a great community. I, I don't think, you know, I look at, at other sports and it's, there's something definitely within the wrestling community because that same sense of community that I, that we had in Derby, you know, I, I sense it here and, and, you know, and had him killing worth when we, when we go to matches and, you know, the, the connectedness of the families and, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure that you get that with other sports. Right. And, you know, you finished your career 92 and 32, which is just remarkable. I mean, that's an unbelievable record. And I'm sure, you know, while you're proud of that record, you're you're more proud of the team record to see the success the wrestling program had. And I mean, when you were there, an undefeated season, they would go on to win a few more state titles years later. I mean, oh, they were incredible. Yeah. With Mike yeah. Marcuccio and Kenny Mayer and all. And, all right. and, and yeah. you know, th that program was just the, you know, you could put that program up against any program in the state. Those guys really ran a terrific program. It, you know, I listen, when we were out there wrestling, I, I, I honestly, I don't think I was doing it for myself. I was doing it for, for, for Buster and, and, and Joe, you know, and, and um, yeah, you're out there doing it for yourself, but you, you just, you wanted to be, you know, we looked up to all the, all the, all the older guys, you know, Richie Calver and, and Eddie Calver and, um, you know, all, all the, all, all the great Mark Angela, you talk about another, right. the rest, I mean, just incredible. Um, uh, you know, and, and, and you wanted to be, you know, you wanted these guys to know your name. Right. And that, and if they knew your name, that was a good feeling. Right. Um, so, and you know, they, they, that program gave a lot of you guys confidence. I mean, you know, you're the type of guy like that doesn't get, you know, rattled or anything, but I mean, you're the guy in the spur of the moment when skydiving, you didn't care. You, you know, <laughs> you just said, he just said, I'm, he just said, I'm going to try it and you didn't even care. And you just, yeah. went, you know, so it gave you guys confidence. And I think that's why so many of these guys are so successful in life, because if anything, it taught you two things, that program confidence and commitment. And yeah. that's why you guys are so successful. I, I, you know, I, so first that skydiving story, funny story. Uh, it was me and, and uh, Mike Ridzi and we went and we were going to yeah. do it and it got canceled because of weather. So we did all the training and then we had to, it rained, we left 
And then, I, and then, and then we had to go back another day to, to, yeah. to do it. And that was when you start thinking, you're like, do I really want to do this? Do I want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane? But I did it anyways. Yeah. Um, so, you know, confidence or stupidity, I'm not sure. Maybe a good blend of, of, of both. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I learned more. I learned more from wrestling um, and, 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 and the coaches than, than I learned in, in anything uh, in school. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I mean, it's the truth. And like you said, you know, confidence and, and, uh, you know, just, just running, you know, if, if that's what you want, you know, you, you, you can achieve it. Um, and, you know, I, listen, I'm not, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes I, um, uh, you know, you don't embody all of those traits, you know, every single moment of your life, but you, you think back and you're like, wait a minute, this is, you know, this is, this is what I was taught. And, and, you know, and you can, you can rise to the occasion. So. Right. And, you know, Rick, I just looking over some of those commercials you do for Unilever, your company, I mean, you just seem like the perfect spokesman. Like you're so cool and collective, you know, you, you're just great at like doing what you do. And I mean, it didn't just stop with wrestling with you. You know, you got a degree at Southern, you were a teacher for 10 years and then you changed, you changed professions. That's not easy to do. So yeah. I mean, one thing about Rick Cassini is he's not afraid to challenge himself. No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> Thank you. That's one way of putting it, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> right. So Rick, let me ask you before we go, what, what advice, you know, I could use your son as an example. What advice would you give to him if he wants to go far with his wrestling career? What would you say he needs to do to make that happen? Oh, geez. You know, I, it's just, just try is, is, as hard as you can. If you're going to do something, give it your all, um, you know, otherwise don't do it. Um, but if you're going to, if you want to do something um, and you know, there's, there's people out there that will, that will help you. Um, and, and, you know, you can, you can, you can do anything you, you want to do. You can be anything you want to be. You get, you got to believe in yourself first, I guess. Right. Right. Um, that's, that's 90% of it. And, and, and refusing to, to take no as an answer. Um, you know, and it's. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, Rick, uh, this was an honor for me and, you know, you, you're a classmate, so it's a big highlight for me to be able to do this. Um, you know, known you for many years. And I just really applaud not only like for what you did in your wrestling career, but what you do in everyday life. I mean, you know, you're an outstanding father, outstanding husband. I mean, you have basically, you know, even though you were, uh, you know, great wrestler, you're an even better person. And I really just congratulate you not on, not only on your wrestling career, but also on what you're doing with your life, because you really are doing great things. And, you know, you Thank should you. be very proud of yourself. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Well, there you have it. Folks. That means a lot more to me than anything else. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Well, there you have it, folks. You know, Rick Cassini's journey started in the winter of 1991. He came out for the wrestling team. He didn't know what to expect, but he came out of it and look what he did throughout his career. He had a devastating injury that could have, you know, been the end of his wrestling career very early, but he didn't let anything get in his way. He knows how to fight through adversity. He knows how to do what it takes to get to the top. Look at his wrestling career. Little by little, each year, he got better and better. And then in 1995, on his 18th birthday, he became a Class S state champion. That's pretty remarkable. All the hard work, all the dedication, all the commitment paid off. And it happened because he was willing to do whatever it took to be the best that he could be. In his life right now, he's doing tre tremendous things. He's raising three great kids. He's married to a wonderful person, and he's uh, a big time, you know, hot shot on the <laughs> in Unilever on the commercial. I don't know he's about just, that, but. <laughs> but Rick Cassini is definitely somebody who has impacted his town, impacted his community, and is the type of guy that you know we are all proud of. For hometown heroes, I'm Mike Kanishi saying goodbye, everyone. <laughs>